You know, one thing that is undeniable about the Heifman Ananda Nano is that it is one of the headphones of all time. Today I'm gonna to tell you if it's good or if it's bad. And you should subscribe because the video that we're doing next is the Ananda versus everything, literally on the planet, everything literally on the planet. Either that or just a few other headphones. But either way, win-win, you know? Before we get any further disclosures, Heifman sent this out for a review. They are not paying or asking me to say anything good or bad. All thoughts and opinions like every video are gonna be my own. I rewatched my original Nanda review because it actually happened like four years ago at this point, which is kind of wild. And I wanna address something and I'm not sure if it's because I'm getting a bigger head or because uh, unit to unit variants or if they just slightly changed the geometry of something on this. But uh, this headphone is no longer comfortable for me. Um, the main issue here is actually the clamp force. It's just a little bit too strong. Because of that, in terms of comfort, this actually goes down a grade. Things like the Aria style build and even the Sundara, even though the ear pads aren't quite as good, I do find the Sundara's comfort to just be a little bit better. I'm not sure if this is just a slight change in pad thickness that they're using, if the steel just unit to unit variance is a little bit strong on the steel head spring here but it's not as comfortable as it used to be. Though I will give it a credit for some style points because the reflection properties of the actual design, the silver kind of ear cup is great. Like these things look really beautiful in most environments. So for like a, a film guy like me, these things look amazing just hanging around. I like the look of them. Now, one other thing that I do want to address since that review is the fact that these have had a substantial price drop over the years. The original Ananda, if you don't remember, started out as a $1,000 headphone and now costs about half that at $550 and these at $599. And they're much more competitive in this price range. But you gotta remember four years ago, this price range was a lot less competitive, only having a few options. We're gonna talk about all that competition in future videos, like that uh, Heifman Ananda Nano versus everything. Okay, so the last updates that I wanna talk about before actually getting into this is of course the Nano part, right? I do think that we should drop the name Junior for stuff when you rename your kid after yourself, so instead of it being Josh Junior, it should just be Josh Nano. I'm fully willing to admit that joke really sucked, whatever. But the Nano is for the nanometer thickness uh, diaphragm that they're using which technically every diaphragm is a nanometer thickness. It's just a matter of how many nanometers, but we'll drop that. Now this headphone is still a very open and vast sounding headphone. It's got a big planar magnetic driver on it, and it sounds like a big planar magnetic driver. You get a lot of the benefits of a big planar, mag planar magnetic driver. Uh, it just sounds very big. Now that is one area that a lot of dynamic headphones in this price range actually have a difficult time challenging is the size of it. Things like the DT1990, things like the HD660 S2, headphones like that, 109 Pro, all of those headphones, they don't really sound as big as this does, even if they might sound a little bit wider out the farthest points of the sound staging. Again, it's been a long time and I don't have an Ananda here to directly compare against. I do think that this headphone is a little bit wider on the outer edges than the original Ananda, but I'm certain that it is basically just as vast as that headphone is. Now I do want to talk about bass, but I'm going to recall bass when I bring up the treble response. So just be prepared for me to half discuss it here and finish discussing it in a little bit. Regarding the bass response, it is tight. It's very fast. It's got those planar properties of just being an incredibly like high fidelity bass response but the tuning of it leaves it to be a little bit dry in the sub bass response and actually if you look at a compensated graph you can actually see that it's a little bit reduced in that sub bass response and this will explain why it sounds like that now when you pair that with what the treble does which we will talk about i promise it comes across a little bit thin even though if you isolate and just listen to one particular part you might be getting like good bass response, like it might sound really good, but when you're analyzing against the whole of its performance, it does sound a little bit thin, and that's something that I don't love. Uh, a headphone like the Sundara, uh, even though it doesn't have as good bass, the bass is almost more a part of the music because it doesn't have as bright a treble as this headphone has. Now the mid-range, the mid-range is very good. I like the timbre of this headphone a lot actually. The general timbre characteristics are amazing, but the actual harmonic properties of this headphone, while it's a little bit on the more clean side, and not necessarily on the warm side like a Focal Clear or like an HD 600 style headphone, it's enjoyable. Uh, in a word, just kind of sounds like unimpeded. It sounds very honest, uh, even if that honesty is a little bit harsh. Now what this headphone isn't going to do is throw you into the depths of warmness like a Focal Clear will or like an HD 600 style headphone will. Um, it, it's not going to throw you into that rabbit hole. It used to be that 
headphones with a lot of trouble didn't really have the detail capability to keep up with that trouble response, especially under $1,000. So they would be bright and not very resolving. So they were just kind of bright and shiny and didn't have a lot of fidelity there. Even things back in the day like the DT1990, which was a relative anomaly back then, things like the Ananda Nano, um, they are bright, but they have the fidelity to keep up with it. So it loses the shininess of it and just kind of is a, a forward delivery in the treble response that is either going to make or break this headphone for you. Now I would define the overall treble to be basically bright, but detailed, and it's undeniably detailed. This is a very, very detailed headphone. This outshines, no pun intended, a lot of $500 headphones for its detail capability. But just like every hyper detailed headphone like this, it comes at the cost of just being too bright. Now the thing with this is, I always ask the question, like can you EQ this enough to get this to a hyper competitive or like the best of this price range category? You can need to bring up the bass response a little bit, and you need to bring down the treble response a fair bit. And in my opinion, you can get this to a very competitive place, but you have to be willing and able to do that. And to me right now at its baseline performance, it still means that other headphones, even cheaper ones, just start a little bit better because they're a little bit more pleasing, even though this does have some upsides like being extraordinarily detailed. Now, one of the benefits of having a more active treble response seems to be that the headphones that have more active treble response almost always have better sound staging. This headphone is no exception. The layering, the depth capability, and more importantly, things like the height and just general size and believability of that sound stage is one of the best at this price range. Like it's seriously competitive in that capacity. Now, one area that is not driving the size and scale of this headphone, unlike some other higher end Hyphmans like the new Audio Organic, the bass response is not driving uh, the scale of this headphone like it is with the, the new Audio Organic, for example. Um, that headphone has wide sound staging in the treble response. It has a good separation factor for the mid range and vocals, but it also has really very confident sub bass that actually drives the believability of scale a little bit more than this headphone does. That's one of the things that separates that headphone. One of the reasons it deserves more money than this headphone does. Now the size of the bass response is decent, but it's just not strong enough to make like massive drum performances or uh, really big orchestral stuff as believable as their higher end headphones. Though at this price, it's fairly competitive for vastness and size and scale and stuff. And I would say that the separation factor for voices, like that cut through ability, if the Audio Organic is like a 10 out of 10 in that area, this is like an eight or nine out of 10. It's pretty close, not quite as good, but but pretty close. Now, if you're into a warmer sound signature or a uh, more mid-range focused sound signature or a bassier sound signature, we're gonna be talking about all those options in the Ananda Nano versus everything video. So again, subscribe for that one. So this kind of leads me to my conclusion. This is a headphone that is information-based. If you're looking for just pure information about your music, this is a good headphone. If you care more about the, the frequency potential, the uh, forwardness of certain frequencies, like you're worried about like, okay, this treble isn't exactly level with the, the upper mid range or something, or the sub bass isn't quite up to par with the mid bass, whatever it happens to be, if you're focusing on those things, clearly this is not really the headphone for you. If you're looking for a more even performing headphone, a headphone that I think uh, a lot of like frequency followers will prefer. The good news is the Sundara is almost half the price and actually I think performs better, which is funny. But if you're listening not for just frequency performance, I do think that this headphone outperforms Sundara in some ways, like that size factor. The bass response is better. Uh, the treble response, while it is brighter, it is more detailed. And those are just undeniable things that uh, the Ananda Nano is better at. But I do want to give Hyphman some credit here for making a headphone as good as the Sundara be uh, at least somewhat competitive, and in some cases beat this headphone for its capability. So what Hyperman is doing right now is they're giving you options. They're giving people options for what they want to listen to and what they want to listen for and what they want to buy for. And that's kind of it. That's what they're giving you. Um, I wish that the naming scheme was a little bit more distinctive because between the different nanos and the stealths and the organics and the SEs, I'm a little lost here, but I think with enough research, you can definitely find a sound signature that you really strongly prefer. And that's cool. Okay, I wanna thank you for watching very much. Make sure you subscribe. Do it. Tony, I swear, there's probably no one who watches me called Tony. Uh, 
thank you for watching. I want to thank Hyperman again for sending this out, and I will see you guys in the next video.